In this video, we're going to take a look at the view menu options located, you guessed it, down here under the view menu here inside your panel. That's right. Now, obviously, we're not going to cover every single option that's no. available for the simple fact that you guys are still new to Maya, or you should be going through this course. <laughs> and uh, some of these aren't really applicable at the moment until we get into a scene and they become important. At sure. that point, we're going to bring up some of these different options then. That's right. And uh, the first thing you're going to see under the view menu is the ability to select your camera. You may have forgotten by now, but every single viewport that you can manipulate and adjust is attached somewhere to a camera. In this case, we are plugged into the pers or perspective camera, so I can choose select camera like so, and we get the pers camera selected. I can now come in here and make any adjustments to any of its attributes, such as its translates, rotate scales, or some of the more important ones, such as focal length for zooming and whatnot. Right, and later on we're also going to show you guys how to attach image planes to cameras as well, and you'll have access to your image plane up under here too. Absolutely. Now, uh, just as a note, the select camera option is going to be dependent on which viewport you're in. So if I go under view here in my top view and uh, choose select camera, I have now selected the top camera. That's right. So just keep that in mind. Let's go back over here to the perspective view. I'll just pop that full screen. Now let's tear this back off. Next under this, we have uh, previous, next, and default home uh, mm -hmm. view options. And what these are going to do is allow you to kind of jump back and forth Undo between... Undo and redo view navigational movement. So that's that's a, it. That's a great way to look at it. So if I rotate around, let's say I have a really complex model in my scene like this. Ooh, wow. Yeah. You've got to be impressed with the modeling skills now. And I decide that... This is like such a great view of this cube, but by accident, I kind of jump my viewport a little bit. I can choose previous view, and that'll take me back. I can keep on hitting previous view, and uh, at this point, I've gone all the way back to the new scene. Then I can go to next view, and it's kind of like redo. That's right. And we have hotkeys for these as well, if you'd like to familiarize yourself with them. These are the left and right bracket keys. So uh, as I put focus back on my viewport. If I hit left bracket key, I'm hitting, uh, this is like previous view, right bracket key is next view. That's right. Now, should you ever get abhorrently lost and you cannot find anything in your scene, you know, you're 65 miles away from wherever it is you need to be and totally scared, you can hit the default home command and what this is going to do is take you right back to that scene you saw when you first launched Maya. It just zooms you right up on your grid no matter what's in your scene. It's a great thing to do when you're just totally confused. I have to use it a lot. So uh, <laughs> down from here, we have look at selection. Now, as we've been playing around, you've probably seen us hit the F key to frame a selection, mm -hmm. which is actually the same as the frame selection command, which I'll talk about very briefly here in just a moment. But let's say you don't want to move the camera really far. It's like, you know, that, that cube now, I mean, he's... That's a good mile and a half away now. We don't want to fly all the way out there. We're working over here, but we want to see where this object is. We can choose Look At Selection, and it'll just rotate the camera so that it's aiming right at whatever it is we have selected. Very nice. We can choose a Frame All, which uh, probably Go help... If, make about three other objects. Yeah, it'd help if I had a, a few more objects, and I'll space them out to prove a point. So three objects with a lot of room in between. And let me show uh, frame all and frame selection at the same time. Let's say I select this, uh, this box here at the center of the grid, and I click frame selection. Whatever it was I had selected gets framed up in the view. If I hit frame all, all objects that I have created get framed up in the view. The uh, thing to keep in mind here, though, is that if your objects are very, very sparsely spaced, as mine are, your camera may end up zooming way, way, way back. Right. If you've built, like, a, a two-scale model of, uh, I don't know, Long Island, <laughs> uh, don't hit frame all. That would be bad. You'll end up on the moon trying to find all your objects. <laughs> so, uh... Down from here, we have the bookmark area. This will be discussed a oh, little bit later. Real quick, before we move sure. out of the one above, the hotkeys, oh, sure. frame selection, F, frame all, A. True, thank you. Let me go ahead and just kind of specify. If you select an object, you hit F. You've now framed up on that one selected object. If you hit A, you're framing up on all. Awesome. So just remember that. Uh, the bookmark area, we're not going to discuss right now because that's actually going to be brought up later on as we need it in a future lesson. Just a quick mention, it is yeah. a way of storing various camera locations that you create yourself or utilizing default ones that come with a new scene. But again, we've got a lesson all about that later on. We start talking about workflow in Project 2, I believe. Absolutely. Underneath this, we have camera settings, which is a, a variety of kind of 
well, switch on off options for your cameras to help you with a, a variety of things. A lot of these will be discussed a, a little bit later on, such as the resolution gate, which shows you exactly what is going to be placed inside your render so that nothing is left out. We'll go ahead and switch that for the time being back to no gate because we are going to focus on that a little further down the road. If for some reason you need the attribute editor for your camera, you can uh, click camera attribute editor and we get the, the attri- camera shape node. There you go. With all of the important attributes for your camera. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's all there is to it. And I mean, it opens the attribute editor. It yeah. just saves a couple of steps. We have focal length and all sorts of other things in here we can play with. And let's see, from here we have the camera tools, which I have already discussed. True. And uh, the image plane option, which is going to be very, very useful a little bit later, but for now is a little out of place. So uh, that's everything that is included in the view menu. The big guys in here, the ones you're going to be using uh, more than probably anybody else, are going to be the previous next views, as well as the uh, look at, oh, I'm sorry, frame selection and frame all. That's right. These are the ones you're going to use more than anything else. So really with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.